Hey guys, today I'm going to do something a little different. First, I start by using this full scale printout of the tombstone to help me create the correct shape and size. So I'm going to start making these little skeleton guys. I think they're gargoyles. They have like ears and stuff. And I have this printout so I know the size I need it to be. And I'm just brainstorming to figure out how I'm going to do that. So right now what I'm thinking of working with is um, I got these little skeleton guys from a Walmart, I think, for $9 a pop. And I'm gonna try to like take them apart and use pieces of them. I also have like a bag of bones. They're actually a little bit bigger than these guys. So I'm probably just gonna only use like the base of these, but I think they'll work. I also have these skulls that are like a little bigger than these. These are from the dollar store. I actually use these for other crafts and they work really well. And they're only a dollar, what a steal. So um, let's see what we can do. I removed the original skull from its body and replaced it with a bigger one. I use model magic, which is like a foam clay, and I mix it with some white glue to make it a little stickier and smooth. Then I shape it over the skull to make the bone structure look more accurate to the ones on the tombstone. I also pour glue over it as I'm sculpting to smooth it out and prevent it from cracking when it dries. I just look at reference images while doing this. Then I cut ear shapes out of foam and stick them on as well. Then I do the same for the other two skulls. All of them look slightly different. Next, I shape pieces of the body like the hands and feet with a heat gun to make sure they're positioned properly. Then cut out chunks of thicker craft foam and add some meat to these bones. I also use some craft foam to extend the spine into a tail. I cut a wing shape then glue it onto thinner craft foam. And I use wooden dowels and poster board to stabilize it in the back. Then I cut out these pointing skeleton hands with an X-Acto knife and use a heat gun to make the details pop. Then I cut three chunky rib cages out of craft foam. And here are all the pieces I'm going to need for my skeletons on top of the tombstone. As you can see, I basically just have like a bunch of different assortment of bones and skulls and I will be piecing these all together and I hope it works. I'm really excited. This is like the part I'm like most excited to do. But before I can do the fun stuff and put all these skeleton guys together, I have to make the tombstone. So I need to make the base and then I need to carve the foam that I'm covering the base in. Um, so let's go do that now. The base of the tombstone is just pieces of wood that you can get cut at a hardware store. It's a very basic shape and can be removed from the bottom of the tombstone. It also has little plexiglass windows and foam board shelves for the lights to glow through. When the base is done, I trace the tombstone printout onto pink installation foam. And then I cut two of those out and I sandwich them onto the wooden base. Then with the back side of foam attached, I lay it down and fill in the gaps with expanding foam to make it more durable. Then I carve off the overflow of foam so I can place the front piece on. Before the front piece is fully attached, the letters for Here Lies Beetlejuice and the down pointing arrow needs to be carved out first. This is done with a combination of Dremel tool and X-Acto knives. Once the letters are carved out, I prep the plexiglass by covering it in these clear red sheets. I just use some Loctite spray glue and then carefully lay them on. The plexiglass is then screwed on to the wooden base. After that, the front panel is permanently attached and all the gaps on the sides are filled in with expanding foam. And now it's time for bed. Good morning. 
it's day three now and this is where I'm at. So today I'm going to try to carve it all out and add rock texture. I have a few different ideas of what I'm gonna try. I've never made anything like this before so I really don't know what I'm doing. So hopefully what I have in mind will work. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy watching this experiment unfold. I also am going to attach all these little guys, this looks like a little boneyard right now, to the top of this. And I have some dowels that I'm gonna put on the sides to like hold their heads on. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy with how the letters look. They're all cut out and the light isn't on but the window is behind it and right now the back is hollow so you can see light coming through and it just looks so cool. It's um, looking really good and I'm so excited. And, oh, it's just really exciting to see it happen and come to life. So let's get on with the next steps. Now with an assortment of cutting tools, I carved the tombstone. First, I smooth and round out the edges, and then I begin adding indentations. So, I am interrupting my crafting activities to relay a very important message to you. One, my dog is adorable. Two, knives are very sharp. I uh, had a little slip of the hand and gave myself a boo-boo. Sweat has been put into this because it was very hot in my garage when I was putting the foam together. Blood has now been put into this. So there's blood, sweat. Hopefully I don't come to tears, but um, we will see if that happens. The carbon process is going a lot longer than I expected, but I've never done it before. So, you know, what else did I expect? I thought I was gonna be done in a day. Uh, now we're on day three, maybe halfway done. Let's see if I could wrap it up. Wish me luck. <laughs> As I add indentations, I also add raised bumps with scraps of cut-off foam. I use a bunch of different tools like the Dremel and a hot glue gun to attach the foam scraps, and obviously a bunch of different knives. I keep doing this until I'm happy with the general shape. And yes, it's insanely time-consuming, but I did it. Now it's time to attach the bones. I just began by putting pieces where they're meant to go and hot gluing them in place. so tired. These guys are on top of the tombstone. They are very secure. The skulls are actually going to be removable, so there are rods coming out of the bodies. The skull has a little hole in it, and then some spray foam was put in there, and it's expanding now, so hopefully it'll hold snugly around the rod. I will show you what that looks like when it's all dry, and I remove them, but this is where I am. I am tired, so we're gonna have to just revisit this in the morning. Ah. So, it's a new day, and I'm going to coat the foam with a plaster paper mix, and I tested a little bit of it last night and let it start to dry overnight. It needs 24 hours to dry. I've um, come to accept that this is not a one-day build. <laughs> Just because all the drying times of like the expanding foam and the glue and the plaster and obviously there's going to be paint. So I've just accepted this is day four. It's definitely going to go into tomorrow because the plaster will have to dry. 
but I can do something else in the meantime. Hopefully by the time the plaster is dry, I'll be able to paint it and this will just be five days. If you're gonna make this project, give yourself like a week of time to do it because I don't know what I was thinking that day that I decided to make this and I was like, it's only gonna take one day. It's not gonna take one day. I'm gonna show you how I made the plaster coating. I did have an idea of like a shredded paper mache mix with plaster and stuff. So I looked it up and I did find a video from a guy that seems like he really knows his stuff and I'll link that in the description. Um, and since this is my first time doing this, I don't want to like do specific step by step as if I have any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I have these little skeleton guys and I need to like fill in all these little gaps and stuff that are in their bones. And I was thinking of doing that with strips of just normal fabric. And then once that's glued on, I can coat it in the plaster that's on the rest of the stone so it will like blend in pretty seamlessly. I think it'll work, so I'm gonna give it a try. But I just wanted to let you know what I was doing. Now it's time to make that plaster. First, I start by shredding up brown packaging paper, and I put a decent chunk of it into my blender, but don't overpack it. And then I pour in some water and blend it up into a pulp. Then I lay down a towel over a bowl and pour the blended mix onto it. And I wring out a bunch of water by squeezing the towel. Then you're left with this damp paper pulp. So now I have my bucket that I'm gonna mix it all in and I have some ground up paper, which looks like something I'd rather not say. <laughs> and then we have some plaster and some glue. There's already some water in the shredded paper, so if I need more, I'll add more, but I already measured it and it should be okay. Um, so let me just mix it all up. After the plaster is thoroughly mixed, I begin spreading it over the tombstone. You can build this up pretty thick between the cracks and raised edges to really blend them in. I use a mix of my hands and a brush to spread it around. It starts to dry pretty quickly, like in 5-10 to 10 minutes. So make sure you don't make too big of a batch of plaster at one time so you have enough time to use it all. I have spent the entire day plastering this thing. That paper plaster mix worked out amazingly. It'll probably be dry enough tomorrow for me to paint. Once it's painted, it's finished. And I'm so excited for it to be finished. While it's still a little damp, I coat it in Mod Podge with my hands to smooth out any small bumps and fill in any tiny holes. Well, it's nighttime, so this doesn't count as a day. It's the end of the night. I haven't done anything to it. I have just been waiting for the plaster to dry, and I've been using this like room heater aimed at it to like kind of accelerate that process. But it is taking a lot longer than I expected. I think it is finally ready to paint though. It is a solid guy. So making something on this scale has just been like such an incredible experience. 
so I have all of this sculpted. I'm very proud of this one. He is my favorite. Don't tell these guys. <laughs> I love the way it blends. It really does look like stone and it's not even like painted yet. So I can only imagine that when it's painted, I'm going to be very, very happy with it. And I'm, I'm like dying of excitement to paint this guy. So I'm going to just do a little bit today. I'm not going to count it as day five. It's just like a sample of day five just to get something going for tomorrow because I'm running out of time before I have to shoot it. So it's time to get messy. Oh, and one more thing before I paint it, I um, made the head removable. Just It has like this dowel, and then there's like a hole in there that it just like sits on, and this is so when it's being transported or moved, it has less of a chance of like breaking. And also, obviously, these guys would be super fragile if they didn't come out because they're just kind of dangling off to the side. So these come off as well, and the wings just slide into these. I put little wooden dowels in like the base and then there's this plastic tubing. This stuff and it's just built into the back of this guy and it's so easy to take apart and it works out great. The angle of it just kind of sits on the shoulder. It worked out really well that it's like in the proper position. So that was an easy little solution to not having to build the wings permanently on to him because these guys are so like thin and wide that I think they would just snap. And I can't look how big it is, oh my god. Oh, also you've probably noticed that the B and the E's don't have their little centers in them. I'm gonna make them separately, so they're just gonna be easy to paint, and I'll just throw them on at the end. I'm not worried about it now, but I didn't forget. I'm aware they're missing, but I just think it will be easier to add them at the end instead of like have to go around them now. The base coat is done. I ran out of paint and all the stores are closed anyway, so I'm just gonna call it a night and um, get clean because I made a bit of a mess, <laughs> but it looks really good. So it is officially day five of working on this costume. Um, the other night I was working on painting the base coat, but that was not a full day's worth of work. I think that was only like 30 minutes that it took me to like completely paint this black. And now I am going to add different shades of gray and stuff and add some detailing and make sure it looks like like stone and all put together and I'm very excited about that. I am so happy with how it looks and how it feels. Like I love the texture and it's also still light enough somehow to move around pretty easily. I just can't wait to finish it because it's just the coolest thing I've ever made in my life and um, I'm very excited. So I'm just gonna get changed into my painting overalls and let's get started. So I'm gonna start making this stone actually look like stone. Um, I'm going to be layering it with some gray paint and I'm just gonna brush it on very lightly and uh, it makes a really cool effect very easily. I think I'm gonna do three or four different shades of gray. Right now I'm starting with a very medium gray.
So, this might be the part where I cry. Not really. But I made a very unexpected mistake and have made it to painting, which is the final step, without noticing that I did this. But I did think about it and I was like, nobody's gonna notice. I didn't notice through all these steps and I'm constantly looking at reference images. But I think it would be such a shame to put this much effort into something and not get it to the standard I would want it. And I'm not gonna be able to unsee it now that I know what I did. So on this skeleton over here, there's supposed to be a hand right here going around the corner and I don't have it. And I was thinking like, how could I possibly miss that? And then I was looking at one of the reference images and I was referencing this while making the thing and you can see Beetlejuice's arm is literally just covering that part of this gravestone. So I didn't even notice and now I need to carve out a hand into plaster that's already hardened. So I have no idea how I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna get a knife and go at it. <laughs> oh, fun. For the hand, I just carved it out of foam like I did the other hands. After I cut out a chunk of space, I seal it with a glued down paper towel. I glue that in place, then go over everything with some Mod Podge. Then it's back to painting the stone. This time I'm dusting over it with a very light gray to highlight the details in the stone. There is something very exciting behind me. It's been like a week because of drying times, but probably only five days of like consistent work. You can make it in a week. I would give yourself two weeks for comfort. Every time I look at it, I kind of freak out a little because I'm like, oh my God, that is the prop from the actual movie, but it's in my living room. And not only that, I made it. And I'm just like, I'm just so, so, insanely proud of it and I'm so excited to show you. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some better showcase shots. Before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to take a little second to thank you, first of all, for watching it all the way to the end. It is so solid and sturdy and it's lightweight too, which is bizarre because it's massive and it looks like stone. So it's a little freaky that when you lift it, it's like kind of just comes up. And I don't have a lot of upper body strength and I can lift it up and down pretty easily. So that is a huge plus for transporting. And I just realized during this entire week, I would wake up in the morning excited to get out of bed just so I could get back to this project. I just feel like this is just a really nice way to switch up the things I'm usually making because I love making costumes. I make them all the time. And it's a great artistic and creative outlet that I'm probably gonna do forever. But like doing something that I've never done before it just hit different. I really hope to do more projects like this and I really hope you guys like watching videos like this because I had so much fun filming this. My heart feels like it's gonna explode out of how happy I am right now. Like, I feel like I'm gonna cry. 
blood, sweat, and tears made it into this. <laughs> I'm gonna go do my photo shoot tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. That is what this all was for, but I didn't think the process would be as enjoyable as it was. So thank you for joining me for that process. Thank you for watching this video. I have tons of other tutorials on my channel for costumes and makeup that you can check out. And if you like videos like this, please like this video and comment telling me you do so I know and I will gladly be doing more projects like this if you guys are into it. So thank you for watching guys, bye. <laughs>